A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. A river runs through the middle of the town. The river has large boats and small boats on it. There's a bridge across the river so that the cars and buses and lorries can get to the buildings on the other side. The cars and the buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary? Mungo? and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games and toys and picture books. Mary's always got something to do. Today she's looking at one of her books. It's full of pictures of ships and boats. Mungo is very interested. There seem to be so many different sorts of boats. Mary's other friend is Midge Mouse. He's usually very difficult to find because he's so small and runs very quickly. He's inquisitive. That means he's always trying to find out things. Ah, there he is, beside Mary's toy boat. It's a yacht. Her father has promised to take them to the pond to sail it. Look, Midge has got his flute. Midge likes music. He likes it so much he's learnt to play a flute but he only knows one tune so far. You listen. Mary and Mungo have seen a boat on the river, like the one in this picture. Do you remember seeing one like it? It's a tug. The next picture is particularly interesting and exciting. What is it going to be? It's a liner. It's so big, it takes people on long journeys across the sea. It sometimes takes days and days, and the people sleep and eat on it. There are even small shops on a liner. Can we see a liner on the river? No, our river isn't deep enough or wide enough for a liner. But we could see a boat like this on the river, and people live on it. What is it? It's a houseboat. People live in it just like a house, but it's a boat, so it's called a houseboat. I'd like to see some real boats. Well, we've got to go along the river to get to the pond, so you will see some boats. I must get ready. I'll take Midge down to see the boats on the river. We'll meet you by the pond, Mary. Midge hasn't learnt to swim yet, so he's got a life jacket to wear, in case he falls into the water. He also has a sailor's cap. He wears that because he likes it. Mary's taking her boat, so I'll take my flute. Mungo, what will you take? I'm taking you. That's quite enough for me to look after. As they live in a flat right at the top of the building, they go down to the street by the lift. They have a special way of doing it. See you at the pond, boys. 
You know, the round pond in the park. We must remember to make sure the lift door is shut. But as usual, Midge was in too much of a hurry. He was already running through the grass and the flowers on his way to the river. That mouse will never wait for me. Mitch got to the river just as a long narrow boat was going by. It was full of wood. There was a dog on it too. It barked, hello. <laughs> then there was a different bark from a different dog. <laughs> That's a barge. It's rather like a lorry. It takes loads of things like wood and coal from one place to another. What's that? That's rather like a motor car. It's got an engine and it takes people for rides like a car, but it's a boat, so it's called a motorboat. What's that? That's a rowing boat. The man is pushing the boat through the water with the oars. It is hard work. I know what that is. It's a yacht, like Mary's toy boat. Mungo and Midge watched as the wind blew into the sail and pushed the yacht along. Midge wanted to sail it. Yes, he wanted to be a sailor. <coughs> it's time to go and meet Mary and her yacht. But Midge had already run off to the park. He had one of his good ideas. It was a fine day, and the park was full of people enjoying the sunshine. Some of them were flying kites. There were quite a lot of toy boats on the pond, and quite a lot of people watching them. Midge was very excited and very interested. But he had to go very carefully through the grass to make sure he didn't get trodden on. At last, he got to the pond and found Mary and her father getting the toy yacht ready to sail. Oh, there you are, Midge. Will you hold on to my boat, please, while we go and get an ice cream? And mind you don't fall into the water. You can't swim yet. Couldn't be better thought Midge, as Mary went away, because it fitted in very well with his good idea. It was only a toy boat for Mary to play with, but it was just the right size for Midge to sail. Midge had heard of men sailing round the world on their own. He wasn't quite sure how big the world was, but he knew it was round, and this pond was round, so he would pretend it was the world and sail round it. Mary was too busy eating her ice cream to see what Midge was up to. He was still holding the string, but now he was on board the boat. Yes, he would take his flute. Sailors like to play music in their spare time. Everything aboard and shipshape. Then the wind started to blow, and the boat began to move. Mungo got to the pond just too late. Midge watched Mungo getting smaller and smaller as the boat sailed further and further away. It was very exciting 
to see the sail full of wind and to feel the boat moving through the water. This is the life for me, and it's no good Mungo barking at me. <coughs> Midge sailed round the pond. He was very happy. The sun was shining. The only sound he could hear was the boat going through the water and the noise of the wind through the sail. Quack, 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 said a duck as she swam past. Quack, quack to you, said Midge, rather rudely. He felt very pleased with himself and very proud because he was sailing the boat all alone. But then suddenly he noticed that he wasn't moving anymore. The wind had stopped, and so had the boat. Midge wasn't quite sure what to do now. There was no wind to blow him along. He couldn't stay forever on the pond. He'd forgotten to bring any food with him, and he couldn't swim. He tried to row himself home, but it wasn't easy without any oars. He could use his flute as an oar, but he didn't want to get his flute wet any more than he wanted to get himself wet. Then he had another idea. This one was much better. He would play his flute. He knew dogs could hear better than people. Perhaps Mungo would hear him. Mitch had sailed so far away that Mungo could only just see the boat. But what was that? That silly mouse has got stuck in the water. I suppose I'll have to rescue him. Oh, oh, the water's cold. Oh, oh, Mungo, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Throw me that string and, <coughs> and I'll pull you back to shore. Midge, you must never go out in a boat on your own, especially as you can't swim. I, I want you to go round the world, round the pond, I mean. You will have to find out how to sail properly first, and how to swim. <clears throat> oh, I don't like cold water. It was time to go home. Mary put Midge and his flute into her pocket to make sure neither of them got lost. Mungo shook himself dry. Oh, what a silly mouse. He doesn't even know how big the world is. <clears throat> When they got home, Mary and Mungo showed Midge a book about the world. It had pictures of all the countries and all the seas. When Midge saw how much sea there was, he thought he ought to learn to swim straight away. That is a good idea, Midge. I love swimming. Yes, so do I when the water isn't so cold. <laughs>